everybody and welcome to Golden Hour, a show about finding joy and living your best life. Sometimes two people can't make a marriage work and it ends in divorce. So if you're in the middle of a divorce or you're contemplating divorce, this show is for you. So if you'd like to learn four ways to make sure you have a happy divorce, keep watching. just ran its course. Maybe you got married very young in your 20s and by the time you reached 40 you were a totally different person that didn't really meld with the person you married. And after working on it and giving it everything you had, you decided to end your marriage. Well how do you do that and have it be amicable? Hopefully you married someone with integrity and someone that had the same values as you. These steps probably won't work if you're in a terribly abusive situation. And for those instances, I suggest you seek professional help. But for those of you that are two reasonable people and your marriage just ran its course, here's the steps for you. Almost 50% of all marriages in the US end in divorce or separation. 41% of all first marriages fail. 60% of all second marriages fail. And if you're daring enough to try a third time, 73% of all third marriages fail. So with those statistics, knowing that there's a high chance of divorce, you really need a game plan if it comes to that. I'm not suggesting you go into marriage thinking about the possibility of divorce. I'm suggesting you marry carefully so that it doesn't end in divorce or that you wait till you're old enough to know who you are. I myself have had two marriages and two divorces. The first one I, st I was with over 20 years. I married too young. Had I met him now, I think we would have made it work. The second marriage was a very, very short marriage. But ultimately, both marriages ended in happy divorce. So how do we do that? Step one, if you're a parent, always put your child first. And if you do that and you selfishly don't think of yourself, then really there won't be any problems. So always put your child first. Now what does that mean? That means number one, don't talk negatively about the other parent. Understand that your child loves both of you. Talking badly about their father or their mother, you're talking badly about them because they come from both of you. Be mindful that your child loves both parents. So whatever you say negatively about the other parent, it reflects on the child. And the last thing you want to do is make the child choose between two parents. Ask yourself, what do I want my child to witness? If you're entering this divorce with integrity in a loving and caring way, it goes a long way towards modeling for your children of how they should act in similar situations. Think about the fighting, the attorneys, the money, any money that you spend on this divorce is money you're taking directly away from what could be part of your children's future. So if it possible at all, go to a mediator and have less attorney's fees. It often baffles me why people fight this and go through all kinds of attorney's fees where they could just sit down and say, hey, what's fair and make it work and put that money that you would have spent on a costly divorce in a college fund for your child. With regards to custody, be fair to your child. Understand what you're doing. If it's a young child, they deserve to know both their parents equally. If it's an older child, they still need to go to both parents. Unless one parent's being abusive, they need to see both parents. Provide the opportunity for both parents to see the child. Your child needs to see that their parents can be friends. I'll give you a little piece of my story. When my son was about 11 or 12, I divorced his father. And he thanked me because when we were married, we fought. But when we divorced, we became the absolute best of friends and were able to do things as a family. You need to work it out so it makes as little intrusion on the, on the child's life as possible. 
Maybe make the bedroom that the child has in each home look the same. They really need to have a smooth transition. So there shouldn't be any fighting about who gets the child what day. The child is not a rope that you use in a tug of war. The child is the center of this whole marriage and the center of this whole divorce. And the sooner you realize that and the sooner you put your child first, the easier your divorce will be. So whenever possible, have the holidays together, even if you have new blended families. Story of me, I divorced my son's father and then I remarried and I invited his father to every single holiday. And I enjoyed having him there. He was part of my life for 20 years. I wouldn't have had it any other way. And if that's not possible, alternate them. If Christmas Eve is important to you and not to the other parent, then you have Christmas Eve and they have Christmas Day. And both of you get together and see them opening their gifts Christmas morning. Or you have Christmas breakfast, they have Christmas dinner with the other family. It is just that simple to share the holidays. There's really no need to fight over this. And if you do keep your child first, there won't be a fight. And when you drop your child off, have friendly exchange, or at least don't have hostile exchange with the other parent. You need to keep it friendly. Just keep your child in mind and never discuss this stuff in front of the child. Set aside, you know, a day a month to have a discussion with your ex like it's a business meeting. It's only when you become selfish and think of yourself that there's problems. If you're a parent, your child is first. Step two is to remember why you married this person in the first place. Go back to those feelings that you had for that person. Go back to that place of love that you felt for that person. And if you go back to that place of love that you felt for that person that you married, you can't possibly want to hurt that person. Now again, all of this is, is for two reasonable people. It's not if you're being abused physically or severely mentally, but any other reasons for the divorce, you should be able to handle it as adults in a reasonable manner. The third step to having a happy divorce is to just be fair. If one parent was a stay-at-home parent, and did all the housework and raised the family and cooked while you were out advancing your career, now that the divorce is ending, that person isn't saleable in the workforce. They don't command the salary that you command. So to just throw them out there in the cold without nothing is totally unfair. And the courts are going to try to make the income be even between you anyway. On the other hand, if you were the stay-at-home parent, don't take advantage of the other person. Don't have crazy demands on them. Take what is necessary and then a little bit more so that you have a quality of life. But you don't need to drag the person through the mud so that they have nothing. Be fair on both sides. Split things evenly because you built the house together evenly and evenly it should be divided. It doesn't matter who worked and who didn't, each person worked. If the stay-at-home parent charged you for hours of daycare and housework and cooking, they would be getting a full-time salary. You need to look at it that way. It's a 50-50 marriage, it's a 50-50 divorce. Fourth step to having a happy divorce is don't blame, accept your responsibility in the divorce. It takes two to divorce. Even if someone cheats, they are feeling like they're not getting what they need. I'm not saying cheating's okay. It is terrible. You should end your marriage first before you go off with someone else. But understand that people just don't get divorced for no reason. There is a reason. Somebody's not getting their needs met. Somebody's hurting the other person. You grew apart. You found out the person you married isn't the person they, that you thought they were because people don't always reveal themselves right away and sometimes it takes years to truly get to know someone. So for whatever reason it was, there's blame on both parts. Accept 
in those circumstances where someone's truly abused or there's substance abuse. That's a different story. I'm talking about two reasonable people growing apart. And step five for having a happy divorce is to decide on what type of relationship you're going to have after the divorce. Are you going to be friends? Are you going to cut the person out of your life completely? If you have children, you're going to be in each other's lives forever. That's a different story. But if you don't have children, what course is your relationship going to take? For me, I remained best friends with my first husband until he passed away. And I am still friends with my second husband. In fact, we're going to go out to dinner next month. When I divorced my first husband, we had to go to a parenting class because I, I, in the state of Connecticut, if you're divorcing when your child is under 18, you have to go to a parenting class. And he picked me up and we went together and we laughed and we had a great time. And everyone in there asked us, you guys are so much in love, why are you getting a divorce? Love was never the issue. We just couldn't live together. And so, that set the stage for a happy divorce. And when we went to divorce court, they asked me if I wanted alimony and I said no. They asked him if he wanted alimony and he said no. And we kept our bank accounts joint throughout our divorce and whoever needed to help the other one helped. We just did it. That's just how we did it. We always put our child first. We always got our child what he needed first and then we took care of each other. With my second marriage, it was a little bit harder of a divorce. Eventually it became very amicable. And two years after our divorce, I called him up and we went out to dinner and I said to him, I forgive you for your part in the demise of our marriage. And I apologize for my part in the demise of our marriage. And that set the stage for us to continue to be friends. So you need to accept the responsibility for your part of the divorce. Forgiving the other person helps you just as much as it helps them, if not more. Holding on to that stuff is just not good for the soul. So using these steps, I truly had two very happy divorces. I believe in my heart, my first marriage was truly successful. We loved each other till the day he died five years ago. And I will talk about that in another video. But he was truly, but he was, but he was truly my best friend. And this is dedicated to you, Eric. And my hope for all of you is that if you do divorce, sorry, my hope for all of you is if you do divorce, you divorce with integrity and that you don't have to cut that very important person out of your life. We became so close. When you're thinking of your child, think of how much better your child's life is going to be if you divorce. I divorced my son's father when my son was 11 years old and my son thanked me. He said, now I feel like I have two loving parents because we did things as a family and we didn't have to argue anymore. Even now that my son's 24 years old, he always tells me that he thinks that his father was the love of my life, which he was, and that he believes that my marriage to his father was very successful. Because although we were only together 23 years, the last seven years of his life, he morphed into my best friend. So our life together was 30 years, and you will never be forgotten, my dear Eric. I love you forever. Everybody. Today I chose to come to a place that I've never been before that I've heard about and it's pretty much in my backyard about six miles from home. It's called the Glastonbury Boathouse. So let's take a walk. Heading out down to the water now. Beautiful day.
Claus Park and the Glastonbury Boathouse. It's really beautiful, so if you haven't come, you need to check it out. Have a great week and see you soon. I hope you enjoyed that video of the Glastonbury Boathouse and Riverfront Park. If the episode helped you in any way, click subscribe, click on the notification button, share, comment, and I'll see you soon.